Good morning, folks. The incoming limb of our star still looks snappy. More filaments erupting. We've got a rundown of space weather and a key paper that hits both climate and catastrophism. We are starting with our star in 193 angstroms and seeing the return of brighter active regions and a couple dark coronal holes, one incoming near the solar equator. We are still within the slightly faster stream of the previous coronal hole, but the modest speed and density to the solar wind aren't producing much in terms of geomagnetic activity. We're still all green in the KP index after the sector boundary interaction two days ago. We do see solar flares are back on the rise, and it is those active regions to blame. Just a couple on the Earth-facing half right now, but the arching fields on the left compared to the right indicate the higher activity regions still on their way to face Earth compared to the quieter portion, departing now, which gave us that little breather from space weather the last several days. Top science story of the day comes from Nature Geoscience, and it's hitting the effect of aerosols and cloud cover. Hopefully we recall last week we went over a couple papers on how reducing pollution actually warms the planet. And this is why. Because most of the pollution at play is not CO2, which is actually plant food and future oxygen for us, it's particulate aerosols, and those cool the planet. If you're not familiar with this concept, it's been published dozens of times, it's just not well publicized because it throws quite the wrench in most climate propaganda. If you recall, we've spent years suggesting that not only do they overestimate carbon forcing, not only do they ignore the solar particles and cosmic rays, but they don't fully integrate proper science of aerosols and clouds into climate models, something it was fantastic to actually see laid out in this one. Indeed, the models are dismally poor at understanding clouds and that hasn't improved much. This was a big point made in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun, and it's more than just a failure of internal dynamics and human-caused influence on climate, failure to understand it. It directly involves space weather, because cosmic rays hit every inch of the atmosphere every second with their cascades interacting to the point where everything is constantly interacting with these electric breakouts from the space particles. This matters for two reasons. First, some of the cascade elements directly form aerosols. It actually produces similar particulate particles to the pollution that makes the clouds. Second, and far more importantly, the cosmic rays energize those particles such that their electrostatic attraction to dust and water vapor is increased, which means they are more likely to make clouds. This is why ignoring the cosmic rays the sun's modulation of the cosmic rays, and the aerosol cloud effect in general has been such a huge problem for climate modeling. And given that Earth's magnetic field is weakening, as it has been right on schedule in the modern excursion, this allows more of those cosmic rays to come in and hasn't even really begun to ramp up in terms of the bombardment. There will come a point when the geomagnetic variation profoundly affects the short-term forcing of clouds, and yes, this is why there are pronounced cooling episodes during all the geomagnetic excursions on record, because the cosmic rays they allow in help to block out the sunlight and reflect it back into space. The geomagnetic forcing and future cooling of the planet are key aspects of the next end of the world and our latest book, The Observer Supplement. All three of our books and much more can be found at the store links below the video in the description box. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.